Good morning, folks. Gorgeous look at the departing southern plasma filament dance as she heads out of view. We've got a lot to cover today and we'll begin, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com. We find that the last day on our star is left without sunspots, but does have the large coronal hole area turning through. It goes transequatorial, sliding into the south towards the left of the frame. The solar wind is relatively calm, all telemetry and normal ambient quiet range, but up in blue we got the phi angle shift last night signaling coronal hole streams are approaching and that Earth is shifting its magnetic connection to the Sun even as geomagnetism remains quiet this morning, seismic risk rising as well. Going to be a rough couple of days as the storms kick up in the United States. As snow descends through New Mexico and across the border today, the worst begins in the overnight hours tonight as the systems converge in Texas. That convergence line is driving the hardest storms and will slide eastward as the cold and snow slides in behind them. However, the most brutal event is coming with a jet stream dip descending into Turkey in the Middle East. It is aided on its head as a portion of the mostly tight polar vortex is peeling off in that direction too. Temperatures of negative 40 on the charts, all while blizzard level winds and snow pound the region. Best of luck to those there. Let's go out to exosystems and for all the talk about how gas giant planets and failed brown dwarf stars are similar, Sometimes they don't really act that way, especially when it comes to their formation and orbital parameters. For those seeking a middle ground, I recommend studying the cold Y dwarf stars, much more rare, but sitting right in that sweet spot between Jupiter-like planets and the larger failed dwarf stars 80 to 100 times Jupiter's size. Want to quickly jump out even further here? We saw some questions about the Loeb Nova event we discussed yesterday. Even as we showed the asymmetrical ejecta from the 2011 TPIX recurrent nova, there were many more curious to see something like that in space. Well, the most famous supernova ever might be 1987A. Its rings are seen tricking us from this vantage point. It was a true example of a polar blast nova and lower level equatorial ejection. It's just not as nice and easy as we'd like. Some nova are spherical. Others follow more electromagnetic shapes. Speaking of such things, a major study out of CCNY shows that the volcanoes cannot account for some of the isotopes seen during catastrophic events of the past. They are forced to conclude something else is at work. Something else contributed to these great extinctions and must explain the isotopes. By the way, the best way to do that is a solar micronova unevenly distributing its elements across the world and tricking our studies of antiquity. Folks, I did about a 20-minute show with Adrian from Suspect Sky Channel last night. For those who don't know, our Star Water series in 2013 essentially spells out how ubiquitous life should be in the cosmos, meaning advanced life too, not just microbes. And when I get into that topic that I do love so much, I tend to head over to his channel where things let loose a little bit more than we do on this channel. Why so serious? Well, because it seems the world of science can't help itself from proving that reality more closely resembles the plasma-controlled paradigm than the others. Like how Hannes Alfane said magnetic reconnection was actually the combination of current sheets, allowing for the explosive release of the entire circuit energy at that point of disruption. Well, it appears to be exactly what they're describing as happening with auroral substorms from intensified solar wind and in solar flares from sunspots, and not the explosive combination and release, but the fact that Alphane actually predicted that the magnetosphere and sun is where those discoveries would finally be realized. After that, it will be the Taurus jet model of spheres in space, something they're already starting to discover, from the high energy to the almost no energy, and this is Billy, by the way, in our lab, took him a day to make the Taurus jet experiment from scratch. Folks, we've got three research groups off and running. Editors expect an email today. And for those who want in on the permaculture group, that starts now. Send an email even if you already did on that topic. We have had to be focused on the group of the time, and we've ignored all other emails. So, permaculture observers research, shoot us an email today. More groups are coming every week, and we can only let folks into one group at a time now, so wait for a group that hits your passion. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now, it's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.